And as you can see, the timer says that it has 10 seconds and the relay automatically turns on. And after 10 seconds, it automatically turns off. So let's try again the 1 peso coin. So it's, it now starts counting. Then let's try to insert another 1 peso coin. And as you can see, the time automatically adds from the original time. And the relay is still automatically turned on. Okay? So as you can see, the time, the time here is automatically computed by our ESP32 microcontroller. So, let's try putting in uh, a sample 5 peso coin. Since I have configured the system to uh, automatically give 10 seconds per each peso denomination, so I am expecting that the value here should be around 50 seconds. So, let's try. As you can see, it now counts from 50 seconds down to 0. And then the relay will now automatically turn on. Welcome to Donsky Tech. In this video, I am going to show you how you can interface your Arduino projects with a universal coin acceptor together with your ESP32 and several other components like this OLED display and a relay that will control the external circuitry. You can use this project or the setup that I have created here when you wanted to create your own vending machine application or any charging services. So say for example, when you go into the convenience store and you would see the uh, charging station there, so you can use your own coins to charge the your mobile phone. So it's basically the idea that I wanted to show you. So, I am going to share with you how easy it is to add Universal Coin Acceptor to any of your Arduino projects. So, what is really a Coin Acceptor? Coin Acceptor modules are widely used in different applications such as vending machines, arcade games, and self-service charging stations such as massage chairs or mobile phones. They are easy to program and use and can even recognize different coin denominations, and even identify fake coins. There are quite different models of coin acceptors created by different manufacturers. Some are even smart and has built-in coin counter and additional features. In my case, I am using the common CH926 model of the coin acceptor here in my country. It actually has four control pins and several additional buttons that you can push. They are actually being used when you want to program the coin acceptor to recognize the different coin denomination. So this is how the pinout of an CH926 coin acceptor is. So there is the set button and the plus minus button here and some LED together with some control pins that you can use or adjust in here. So, how do you program this coin acceptor to recognize the coins that it would accept? As each coin has a different denomination, so the coin acceptor should properly notify you about the value of the coin that it was inserted. Uh, different models of coin acceptors have different processes for programming them. So, you should refer to your manufacturer manual. But, if you have the same model as mine, then you can refer to this uh, manual which I found on the internet. This is actually the process that I have just followed and it actually is correct and it was able to recognize the different set of coins that I have. So the next question that that you may ask is how can you interface with this coin acceptor? The universal coin acceptor would oftentimes output a short, short burst of signal that can use to track the denomination of the coin that was inserted. For example, in this image, I have a single peso coin, which is a Philippine one peso coin. And then this would add, output a single high to low transition or what they co commonly call as falling edge transition. On the other hand, if I have a 
inserted a 5 peso coin, then you would notice that it would result into 5 high to low transition. So, as you can see from this image, this, these are the transitions from high into low. So, for the 5 peso coin, you would see that there are actually uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 high to low transitions. To detect these transitions, as I have mentioned, we can take advantage of interrupt pins on our microcontroller and count the number of the transitions. So what we need to do is we can write an ISR or an interrupt service reading functions that would be notified or called when the polling edge transition is detected on our interrupt pins. This is actually how easy it is to read the amount of coins that we inserted in our coin acceptor. In my case, the ESP32 has this interrupt pin or ISR function and the Arduino uh, Uno or the other ESP8266 has their own interrupt pin handling mechanism also. So you can just refer to how the ISR or the interrupt are being implemented to your microcontrollers. So in this project of mine, I created a mobile solar charging station wherein the duration of the charging is set by the amount you inserted on your coin sector. I have used an ESP32 board running the Arduino framework and an SSD 1306 I2C OLED display to show the time. The OLED would display the amount that was inserted and the remaining time and it has a it, it is controlling a relay that will control an external circuitry. So this is actually how the wiring and schematic is being done. So since the coin acceptor is 12 volts, so you need an external power supply to power the input pin of the DC plus and the DC minus, while the signal or the coin pin needs to be pulled up with a 10 kilo ohm resistor to the 5 volts and connected to the interrupt pin that I have. Right now, I'm using the GPIO, GPIO 90. For the wiring and the schematic, so this is actually how easy it is to use the i 2 c OLED and the relay. So just follow the uh, the wiring mechanism in here. Now, so much for Chewy now, and let's go down into the code. So the code for this project is available in my GitHub repository. So you, I will put the link in the description of this video if you wanted to take a look. So let's go now into this project. I'm using the Visual Studio Code with the platform I.O. extension in developing this project. But you can also use the Arduino IDE. There's actually just two libraries that I'm currently using. One is the Adapruit SSD1306 driver and the Elapse Millis uh, port, which is I am using for the timing. So the SSD1306 is used for the driving of the OLED, while the Elapse Millis is used for uh, uh, using the timing mechanism. So instead of using the delay of Arduino delay function, I'm using this particular uh, library. So the three important files are here, the main CPP and the OLED displayer. I actually created uh, an OLED displayer class, uh, which uh, you can use to display text on your SSD 1306 and the it contains methods like this display text and you can set the text size so that it would be easy for me to send and uh, show something in my OLED. So this will also allow me to uh, make my main CPP much smaller because I will not uh, do any additional code for the OLED. So this is the implementation, which is the displayer CPP. So it contains the information on how you can display text on, on your OLED. Next, in the main.cpp, uh, I only have this amount of code. So as you can see, I just imported the library in here. And these are the setup for my OLED. Uh, as you can see, I have created the OLED displayer here and I'm passing an instance of an Adaproot SSD1306. Some of these variables are being used uh, to track the amount being uh, inserted into my OLED, uh, in my coin acceptor. And I have these volatile values 
which I needed to be updated when during the ISR functions. And I have these functions, which is the elapsed millis, which I used to count the time or the remaining time for a particular denomination. And the interval is now set to 10,000, which means that one peso denomination is equal to 10, 10 seconds or 10,000 milliseconds. Then I have here the pins, the pin assignment for the relay and the interrupt pin, which is 19. And I declared the turn on relay and the turn off relay. So these are the forward declarations of my function. Now, this is the interesting part, which is in the ESP32 interrupt handling. I have, uh, whenever I receive a transition from low to high, which is the polling edge, I just updated this coin inserted and the update display uh, variables. In the setup method, as you can see, I declared the serial uh, monitor baud rate to the default, which is 9600. And I have attached the interrupt pin on a polling edge and then the function, which is the ISR. Now I have started the OLED display here and the relay. So that's basically how the setup function is created. In the loop, as you can see, I would check if there is uh, any notification that the ISR was called. If, if a coin was inserted, then I immediately turn it to false. And then I, I automatically adjusted the amount and added one. And then, if the amount is already greater than zero, which means that something was inserted, then I would start the countdown. So, these variables will tell me that the countdown has already started. The timer here, I just needed to set me the timer for it would count down from 10, 9, 8 up to zero, and then it will turn on the relay. Now, there is another if clause here. If the total amount is greater than zero and the countdown has started, I can now compute how many time it is uh, available. So for example, if the total amount is 1, then I just multiply it by 10 seconds. And then if the timer has already exist, exceeded the 10 seconds time, time out, then it would go into this code and then it will tell you that it is time out, time is up. And then it will start turning off the relay and then the countdown is set to false. The amount also is set to 0 and it will display the OLED, which is zero seconds. Now, this is the another interesting part for this code. I just use this to uh, count down the timer. So whenever there is a one second differential already, then what we need to do is just compute the how many time left is available for the particular coins that was inserted into my coin acceptor. And then I just Every one second, this is the code that automatically counts down and display into my OLED display. Now, this turn on relay and the turn off relay are just uh, controls the uh, relay. So I can just turn it on or turn it off depending on the, look, the triggering mechanism. I'm using a high level triggered relay. So if I wanted to turn on the relay, then I should turn it. I should send it a high, and if it, I want it to turn off, then I should send it a low. So basically, that's how easy it is to program the OLED. So the code for this project, as I've mentioned earlier, is available in my uh, GitHub repository, and the companion write-up of this project also is available. So if you wanted to take a look, then you can uh, go into my site and I'll put a link in the description also of this video. And that's it. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!